If you're a man who would like to start meeting and dating the type of women you've always wanted and have effortless relationships where women never nag or argue with you, then this will be the most exciting program you will ever see. Welcome to Corey Wayne's Total Life Transformation Show. In the next half hour, you will watch two men as they begin their journey through Corey's coaching and mentoring program. Corey and his master trainers teach average guys how to master picking up and having effortless relationships with beautiful, desirable women, free of drama, nagging and arguments, no matter what their age, background or looks. Corey and his master trainers take a very bold and unheard of guarantee to their clients. The client decides the goal, whether it be getting a girlfriend, dating multiple women or getting married. Then Corey and his master trainers coach and mentor the client until the client says they've achieved it. Let's listen in as Corey and his lead trainer speak with their newest group of clients. Hi, I'm Corey Wayne, and before we get into the show, I just wanted to share with you a brief summary of the way I used to be. I can remember back when I was younger, when whether I was out in a nightclub or at a mall or just interacting in, in my daily business life, when occasionally I'd, I'd run into a girl that I just really felt attracted to, I just remember feeling so frustrated that I didn't know what to say, I didn't know how to walk up to her, start a conversation. I wanted to more than anything, but I was afraid that I'd, I would look like a fool or my friends would make fun of me or that I'd get rejected. And, and it was just the, the fear of rejection and kind of the, the fear of un, the unknown and not knowing what to say. And so I went on this five-year journey of this process of self-discovery, of understanding myself, learning what women really responded to. I read lots of books out there. I, I read the typical books that you see in the bookstores. And a lot of them talked about, taught a lot of great relationship skills, but part of the, the problem I found is the few that were out there that, that taught dating skills or courtship skills or in the area of picking up and approaching or starting conversations with women, when I tried the things that they said to do, they didn't work. What really started to shift things for me was when I started spending time with guys that were really successful with women and, and, and interviewing and talking to them and talking to their wives or their girlfriends and discovering what, it, what the little subtle differences were that, that made the difference. So the place where I'm at today is that where, where you can get to in this part of your life is, is being able to walk through, the, through a mall and make eye contact with somebody and just have a connection and walk right over and you're just as eager and in, as enthusiastic to meet her as she is to, to meet you. And the relationship just flows. It's completely effortless from there. If I see a girl that I really am attracted to and I would love to have like a conversation with her or try to spark something with, it's like the first thing that comes to my mind is like I'd be embarrassed if I walked up to her and got rejected right there. Not only would I look foolish in front of her and then all of my buddies behind me, but you know, just the whole group of people in general. And and I feel that's the biggest fear I think I have is just being embarrassed. Dave Irvey is going to be one of the people that we're following. He originally purchased my book, and a few weeks after he purchased my book, he gave me a call and to help him with a through a relationship that had just ended. Broke up with a, a girlfriend of mine I've had for like almost a year, and I was really in love with her. And I mean, this is like she was a world to me. And then like out of the blue, it just seemed like she just she up and just like you know dump me and it was just like the horrible thing and just felt like my world came crashing down. He's been through my set of CDs, he's been through the book, but he really needed an experience in the field, meeting women and starting conversations so he, he can actually see it and feel it and go through an experience of it himself. The problem that I have is actually going up to women. I, I, I really don't think I have a problem with getting women, it's just that they have to come up to me. So I'm trying, what I'm trying to do here is actually get over my shyness and my fear of rejection. So Mark wants to work on overcoming his shyness and, and to be able to start conversations with pretty much anybody that he meets on the street because he knows it'll also help him in his business life with his, his, his sales and his business and his marketing of his own company. Well what this show is about is we're taking two guys, Dave and Mark, through a four and a half day transformational process where we get them comfortable going up and interacting with different people and women so to help them get comfortable in their own skin 
and starting conversations with people. And so what you're going to see is all of the different techniques, the work, the in the field work, the network chiropractic work that we're doing with Mark and Dave is you're going to see a transformation in their physiology and their body language and their words and their confidence and you're gonna be able to see it with your own eyes and hear it with your ears and, and feel it in your heart so you as you're sitting at home can watch this and actually see the actual transformation yourself. On day one I introduced Mark and David to a good friend of mine Dr. Dominic Deanna. He is a network chiropractic doctor. This care is not only important, it's absolutely essential in our society. The only way your body can be stuck in a stressed state is if you have unresolved issues mentally, emotionally, or even physically, football or car accidents. My job is to clean that stuff up so your body can be more calm, more peaceful. Somewhere between 70 to 80 percent of our communication between one another is actually nonverbal. It's our physical cues. So think of it as you're trying to have a conversation with a beautiful woman at a bar or at a club or, or at a party. But you're still stuck in an argument that you had an hour ago with your boss or last week or last month or 10 years ago. It's inappropriate. And literally who you're being communicates louder than what it is the words that you're choosing. And as you're trying to talk with her, and, but your physiology is stuck in a rage pattern or a fear pattern, then literally she's already judging who you are and whether or not she's interested in you. And if you're trying to talk with a woman and your body's in an anger pattern, she's going to feel not safe. Even though you're saying all the right things on cue perfectly, your physiology is saying anger or fear uh, pattern or feeling dishonored. There's different states that we have to our physiology. And when those states are appropriate is ideal. That means that what you're sharing with the person verbally matches your physiology. You have total congruency in your communication, your odds are much, much higher. So the, the gift that Network Care provides is instead of working with someone to help them feel more relaxed, like giving them a muscle relaxant or giving them a massage, which are very effective at times, your physiology is still stuck in that state. So what the care that I provide actually does is it shifts the state that your body is in on a neurological level and a physiological level. So the work that I do increase awareness of self so the person is more aware of who they're being in the moment. It's only when you're aware that you're at choice. If the person's body is locked, literally there's no awareness or connection to that area. The person's not at choice. The second aspect of care is the actual physical application, making gentle contacts into the base of the skull where it meets with the top of your neck and the lower part of your pelvis and making those gentle contacts according to the pattern that the person is stuck in, we're actually helping the brain reassess, is this appropriate? and shift out of that state. The more peaceful my body is, the more peaceful people feel around me. That is definitely to my advantage. The body can't heal if it's stuck in a pattern. It can only heal when it's peaceful. So how the care that I provide ties in with what uh, Corey is going to do this uh, over the next few days, make amazing transformation with a few people that, that uh, I'm real excited about working with them, is that we're going to change their physical state so that they're not stuck in anything in the past. And I think you're going to see amazing changes with people, not only with their communication, with who they're being, and you're also going to notice a change in their posture. And each time we work with someone repetitively over time, we're literally refining their ability to shift from one state to another so that you're at choice. So what I first saw with Dave when I started working with him is right away his posture was that his body was pulled forward towards the middle, which is consistent with people that have low self-esteem, low self-worth issues. Well, when I first heard about the network care from Dr. Deanna and Corey and stuff and got introduced to it was, um, I was very skeptical at first, so I just, but I took it with a grain of salt and I was going to just go with it and just try it out. And um, so after the, probably the second application of Dr. Deanna's network care is when I noticed a big improvement in just my posture, you know, my breathing. When I first met Dr. Deanna and he was explaining his whole treatment to us uh, that first night, I thought it was a witch doctor kind of hocus pocus thing and it turns out that he really does know what he's talking about. When, when I started working with Mark, Mark was actually pretty decent shape to start out with. But what I noticed is that his head was pulled forward a bit, which is associated with someone who has concerns for the future and nervousness, anxiety type of stuff. Um, but again, he started out at, at a better place than a lot of people that, that I see. Uh, just as everybody in our society needs a little fine tuning, Mark needed a little cleanup as well. Now for the next step in David and Mark's transformation, we took them to the mall to give them a total fashion makeover. Hey guys. Hey. We 
need a little uh, fashion help for my friends here. Um, these are some of our newer jeans. They're guest premium. They have a higher thread count. They're softer, more flexible. This is a nice start to me when you think about something like this. All right, Dave, let's see what you got. All right. What you guys oh, think? Huh? Sure. Yeah. Not too bad. That'll definitely work. Very nice. The jeans fit really well. Turn around. The stitching on the back is really nice. It stands out and it matches the shirt. Yeah. Wow, wow I love right. it. Yes. The coloring is really nice on you. It's a nice men's Marciano shirt, so it's a little dressier. After the mall, we took the guys to a hair salon to get their hair and nails done. But we're gonna sh we're gonna shorten it up just a little bit. We're gonna clean it up, make it a little bit closer to his scalp. He has beautiful curls, but he likes it on the shorter side. So we're just gonna clean him up, and make him look tidy. All right, so what are we doing here? I just need you to put both hands in. All right. And why do I gotta put my hands in soapy water? Because it's going to soften your cuticles, so it's easy to work with. Okay. I'm making it a little bit closer to his scalp because he likes it on the shorter side. I'm eliminating some of the, the thickness, putting some layers in it. Okay, you're not as wrinkly, but... Mm -hmm. That's fine. So are we good? You're good. You're all so, set. Ready to get my hair cut then? Yep. All right. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Ty, but it looks good. You like it? Yeah. Looks great. You got beautiful hair. You know these nails are horrible, right? You know what yeah. I use for a manicure? What? Teeth. No, no. Let's not do that. All right, Maverick. So how, how's it going so far? What do you think so far? I'm thinking it's... Definitely different. Yeah, I'm, I'm liking it so far. What do you think about the new hairdo? I think it's going to look fabulous. It's real fun. It's new trend. It's a trendy haircut. It's oh, going to be very easy for you to take care of. After we got the appearance and the fashion makeover taken care of for Mark and Dave, then Andreas and I sat down with them to do a little night game prep. We're going to talk about the one of the core principles that my book and my teachings are based on, which is your purpose. Whatever it is that you want, whether you want a girlfriend, you want to date multiple women, or you want to settle down and get married, women will show up in your life to test your purpose meaning they're going to test to see if you're confident enough, if you have enough inner strength and enough belief in yourself to really get what you want. So for tonight, we have just a few simple goals when you approach a woman. You make her laugh, you want to read her level of interest in you, and then you want to ask her phone number to call her later for a date. The task for tonight, what, uh, what the goal is of Corey and myself is for you, obviously the biggest thing is to build confidence, increase your self-esteem, and have a lot of fun. Uh, to be honest with you, about tonight, you know, I'm really still very nervous about it. Even though I got all these good coaches coming along and helping me out and everything, and I'm doing all these things to help improve you know, my self-esteem and all that stuff, it's still very nerve-wracking. I think every man goes to that. When I first came here and they told me, oh, we're going to go out tomorrow night, um, it felt like somebody had punched me in the stomach. Like at the beginning of the night though, you know, I was kind of apprehensive to even like talk to people. And I thought it was going to be real easy for, for me to open up when we got there. And um, walking in the beacon, I felt really out of place. We tried to walk up to th these three bronze outside and uh, I was just so nervous, but I still tried to like, you know, just say something. And I pointed to the camera. You realize that you're on camera right now? And it, it was a total bomb. They just kind of like, you know, I was there no more than like a minute and I just like, you know, walked away like I always would. Eventually, as I talked to uh, Corey more while we were there, um, my fear level, I guess, went down, my intimidation level went down uh, and I opened up. I was able to open up and express myself, which is what I'm really here for. Corey made uh, a goal for me just to go talk to five different people and get their names, simple as that. And uh, I was like, all right, he said I had 15 minutes to do it. So I did, I just went up to anybody and just started talk, asking their names, handshaking, and it was a more reinforcing of people are just nice in general. Right after that, just something happened and clicked to me, but I just, just started talking to anybody and everybody I could. And at one point, I got to talking to um, you know, one girl and she told me to sit next to her. And then after like we talked for a little bit, she got up and like said she had to get her purse, and then I just saw her like, immediately go 
uh, dance with this other guy and I'm just like, what the hell am I gonna do now? I mean, I felt like rejected. I went and got a little bit of help from Corey and he's just like, you know, don't worry about it. Just go talk to somebody else and just don't even think about it. I went outside and I talked to this other girl and I sat down and talked to her and we had like a good five, 10 minute conversation. And as I was getting up to leave and say goodbye or whatever, to, or, you know, just move on to the next set, that same girl that I was talking to came out and came straight to me. I'm like, oh, hey, what's up? And she gave me a hug and everything. And Beacon was like, my opening up night, and uh, so, and I, although I didn't get any numbers, it felt like a great success to me because it's starting to make me show that this stuff really works. After another full day of classroom content and network chiropractic adjustments by Dr. Deanna, Andreas and I took the guys out to another nightclub called Vintage. Vintage was the night where I just let loose, I didn't care, I just had this new, I just had this new goal, just like, I don't care, I'm gonna have fun with it. As we left the house, um, I could feel those uh, feelings coming on again. Once we got down there, it was like, it was a calm that just overtook me. Amazing night, and uh, I got all these numbers, like like five numbers. I got two numbers on my phone, I don't even know who they are. You know what I mean? It's like, I've never had that happen before. Hi right, now, you had a great night, all right? I'll see you later. I just had a really good time. It was, it was, it wasn't, it wasn't phony, you know, uh, it was, it was real. I didn't have any fear to go up and talk to anybody. Or... And I was making out with the girl within 30 seconds at the bar. I mean, I was just like totally blown away. I felt comfortable going and talking to individuals. And I think that had a lot to do with the training. It just proves that this stuff really works and it's just, it's mind boggling. I'm just, I'm very happy with the results so far. And it's only been, what, two nights? So after taking the guys out to two evenings of bars and nightclubs, we did some prep work with them to take them out to a mall where they can interact with people on a normal, everyday basis. This is a busy mall. There are a lot of people there, and, and we're going to be near the entrance, and there's just a steady stream of people. What we're going to do is we're going to be walking the mall, like your tourist or shopper, so you're just basically going out to shop. So it is much more difficult while you're walking to open up a conversation or a strike a conversation. While you're walking, make the eye contact, smile, and just say hello. Well, at the mall, it was a different atmosphere, you know? Like in the club scene, it's, you know, it's easier to open up a set because everyone's all crammed into one little tight area. Everyone's out to have fun and be socialized, where people at the mall are like just trying to shop and just, you know, do their thing. Well, you really feel stupid walking around in a circle at the mall, but I don't know. We, I mean, it was, um, I guess it was a homework thing for us to do. So when we first got there, I, I mean, I just felt weird because I felt on the spot and I kept thinking people were looking at me like, going, what the heck is this guy doing just trying to walk up and talk to me and stuff? Just started saying hi and hello to anybody. You know, people are just will respond to you and just as long as you're positive and, you know, and just go with it. Oh, I've, I've lived here since 97. Uh, Still can't lose that accent. But that's all right, I'll keep that one with me for the rest of my life. I actually sat down with this one gentleman and had a conversation with him and he told me just about his whole entire life story. I could use that towards um, my business practices. I appreciate your help, all right? I'll tell you what, I'll be at Starbucks here in 20 minutes. Me and a couple friends are gonna be there. If you wanna get a drink, I'll, I'll buy you a drink or something, okay? okay? All right, see you later. The mall made me realize that you can do this anywhere. It's not just about, this is not all just picking up women, it's about me just coming out of my shell as a person, being comfortable in my own skin. If I would walk into a mall a couple of weeks ago or whatever, it would always be with my head down, looking down at the ground. And today it was completely opposite. I, my head was up, I was standing up straight. It just felt comfortable. After spending the day at the mall, we took them out for one final evening at downtown Orlando at Wall Street Cantina where they actually had a band playing and a street festival going on. Last night at Wall Street was completely packed. So you really couldn't even get into conversations with people, but we did do a lot of meet and greets. A lot of their coaching came through and really hit home yesterday. You know, and I guess that's why it made it so much easier for me to just, just put it on and, and just go do what I had to do. We go in, we, we get there and we get our tags to go into the event and uh, as soon as I walk in, there's a, a girl comes up to me that I had talked to in the mall and uh, she had saw the camera and she just like was very, she's very negative. I think she got really upset that like maybe we were, I talked to her just because, you know, I needed her to be on film and I wasn't really interested in her. 
I was interested in her to begin with because, you know, I mean, she seemed like a cool person. But when she did that and she threw all this negativity at me and it just ruined me for about the first half of the night. But that was just like the old me coming out, you know, like caring about what this person really thought about when I should just care about who, how I feel and who, who I am. So thank God Corey was there and uh, he helped me uh, just put things back into perspective and uh, I just embraced it for a minute and just took the emotions for what they were and just realized maybe she's not having that good of a day or something like that. After that, man, the night after that, I met up with like two or three other girls and got, I think I got two numbers. It was just, it was a great time after that. Together, both the guys, I think, made tremendous strides. I'm very pleased with the results. I'm actually a little stunned at how much progress we made in such a short period of time with the guys. How you feel about yourself is a big reflection on how people see you. And uh, that's what I've learned like a big time out of all this whole experience because it's like people can sense it. I feel like in the last four days I've grown um, emotionally and probably and, and mentally too. I know I'm definitely standing up straighter. So that's 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 for sure. I, I feel taller. I mean, it, it may sound ridiculous. It may really sound ridiculous, but I feel taller. I feel prouder. It's just a, it was a, actually it was a really good experience. It was something that I think everybody really should do or consider doing, especially if you have uh, problems with talking to people. It doesn't just have to be about women. I don't want to gear up what I'm doing or why I did this just towards women. In order to be successful in what you do, you have to be able to go and talk to people, open up to total strangers. I feel like when I go home, people are definitely going to notice a difference in me. I mean, because I know it, I notice a difference in me. You know, I'm just going to throw out there who I am in the world, and if, you know, people receive it, great. If they don't, you know, it's too bad for them. I'm just going to keep plugging forward, you know, because I'm just here to have fun and be happy. That's what I've learned mostly.